عبادك الأيام فتا وتنح بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل فيدمغه فإذا هو زاهق ولكم الويل مما تصفون Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah tried, trying to prove this anthropomorphic aqeedah in his Bayan, Bayan o Tilbis al Jahmiyyah, volume number one, page 568. He went to the extent of saying, trying to prove that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sitting on the arsh. He has said, that if Allah wanted and He wished, He can settle and sit on the back of a mosquito. This is written in Bayan al Tilbis al Jahmiyyah. That if Allah wanted, He can sit and settle on the back of a mosquito. He can sit and settle on the back of a mosquito. Now, my brothers, I ask you a question. Is this what the Salaf have said? Is this, is this what our pious priests have said? He further mentions that if Allah can sit and settle on the back of a mosquito, why cannot he sit on an arsh which is bigger than the heavens and the earth? If Allah can sit and settle on the back of a mosquito, then arsh is very easy to do. فَكَيْفَ عَلَىٰ رَبْ أَرْشٍ عَظِيمٍ أَكْبَرْ مِنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Brothers and sisters This is another response to Hanafi Fiqh channel You've all heard what Brother Muhammad Yasir هداه الله May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him and myself to the haq In what he has said about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah You've all heard it but inshallah ta'ala, brothers and sisters, those who are listening, that which is not hidden from you all is our brother Muhammad Yasir. Not once, not twice, but on many occasions, he has lied in that which he has claimed. The ulama of al-bahth wal-munadara, scholars who have authored books in that field, have mentioned that if a person is attributing a statement to an individual, that they have to be truthful in their attribution. Or they have to be truthful in that which they ascribe to that individual. And if they, ha if they claim evidence, then they have to bring their evidence forward. And they say, إِن كُنْتَ نَاقِلًا أَوْ مُدَّعِيًا فَالدَّلِيلُ If you are uh, transmitting a statement of the scholar, be fair and just in the way you transmit it. Be truthful. Don't lie. Don't add things to it. Don't subtract something from it. Be honest. Be truthful in your transmission. And if you're putting a evidence, evidence forward, then make sure your evidence is authentic. Double check and research. And also make sure you bring in evidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring your evidence forward if you're truthful. Pay attention. Allah connected the truthfulness by the person bringing in evidence. A person is truthful when they bring their evidences forward. Till now, till our day today, all that which I have mentioned, I have re I responded back to Hanafi Fiqh, you have not found one Imam in Aimat al Salaf in which our brother Muhammad Yasir has used this istidlal or he has brought them as an evidence and anyone who knows um, how to uh, bring forward your evidences or even how to tackle a matter would know that this is the way that a person will do it the person brings their evidences first qala Allah qala Rasul the Salaf of this Ummah understood these verses and these hadith the way I said it after they bring those three points, قال الله, قال الرسول, and then the understanding of the pious predecessors, 
Then the person brings forward the doubt, the shubuhat, that the opponents have put forward. But a person who hasn't even given evidence, who hasn't provided any hujjah, doesn't straight away go to the books of the opponent and try to transmit things from them. Um, let alone lie about them and forge statements which they haven't said. I want to remind our brother Muhammad Yasser, everything which you're bringing forward, it's not new. Alhamdulillah, it's not new. And I promise you, you won't bring anything new. Your forefathers, from the Mubtadi'ah and Ahlul Dullal, and the misguiding individual, it's, you're only regurgitating and bringing back what they've said. And the response, inshallah ta'ala, that I give you are exactly the response that were given to them, which is, inshallah ta'ala should suffice. Bi'idhnillah al-kareem. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he made for this religion, people are going to protect him. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, he said, Al-Malaikatu hurrasu al-Sama. The angels are the safeguarders of the Sama. They protect it and they guard it. Wal ashabu al-Hadith. And the people of Hadith are what? They're the ones who safeguard the earth. They protect it from anyone, from anyone coming and trying to distort the religion of Allah. I want to remind you, uh, Brother Muhammad Yasser, and those who follow his belief, a statement Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, which is, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ إِظْهَارَ دِينِهِ أَقَامَ مَنْ يُعَارِضْهُ فَيُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ بِكَلِمَاتِهِ ثُمَّ يَقْضَفَ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ فَيَدْمَغُهُ فَإِذَا هُوَ زَاهِقٌ Whenever Allah wants to make his religion apparent, he brings dim-witted, ignorant, liars forward who try to attribute to the religion that which the religion is free from. And then Allah brings people who are responding to it. By you coming and lying and forging and ascribing these matters to the religion is a way which Allah wants to bring this religion clear to the ummah. And it's a way Allah wa ta'ala wants to purify it from those filthy statements and from those corrupted ideologies. It's a way. And then what does Allah do after that? As the Shaykh said, Allah brings a people who come, who destroy, who nullify your corrupt principles and evidences or more like your doubts. And the haq becomes clear as it's always going to be. The haq will always stand. أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَنْ فَسَالَتْ أُوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا فَاحْتَمَلَ السَّيْلُ زَبَدَ الرَّابِعَ وَمَّا تُوْقِدُونَ عَلَيْهِ فِي النَّارِ بِتِغَاءَ حِلِيَةٍ أَوْ مَتَاعٍ زَبَدٌ مِثْلُهُ كَذَلِكَ يَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْحَقَّ وَالْبَاطِلِ فَأَمَّا الزَّبَدُ فَيَذْهَبُ جُفَاءً وَأَمَّا مَا يَنْفَعُ النَّاسُ فَيَمْكُثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ That which is going to benefit the people will stay on this earth inshallah ta'ala Anything that is corrupt and that goes against the religion will perish and it will go inshallah ta'ala Lying to spread a madhab. Lying to push your belief. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, who you've lied about, even in this video, inshallah ta'ala, to prove. He advises you and the likes of you. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, Kitab al-Jihad. فَالْكَذِبُ عَلَى شَخْصٍ حَرَامٌ كُلُّهُ Lying about the people by an individual, it's haram always. سَوَاءٌ كَانَ الرَّجُلُ مُسْلِمًا أَوْ كَافِرًا it doesn't matter if the person is a Muslim and it doesn't matter if the person is a Kafir. Barran or Fajira, whether the person is obedient or whether the person is, is a transgressor. It doesn't matter. Lakin al iftira ala al mu'mini ashaddu. But forging statements, lying about the believer is worse. Balil kadibu kulluhu haram. Rather, lying is haram on anyone. Allah Ta'ala, He told us in the Quran that the people who lie are the disbelievers. The ones who lie are the disbelievers. That's their religion. That's how they spread their ideology. That's how they put their uh, uh, thoughts forward. They lie. That's how they have to spread it. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورَ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ Lying, it leads to fujur. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala, he explained to us what fujur means. Lying will lead you to fujur. What does fujur mean? Ibn Hajar said, al-fujur means al-maylu an al-haq. Deviation and diversion from the haq. Wal-ihtiyalu fi raddihi. And then the person will result to what? Rejecting the haq. 
lying will make you an individual who diverts from the haq and when the haq is brought to you, rejected. Ibn Rajab al Hanbali rahimahullah he said, wa ya'ni bil fujur. When he was explaining this hadith, he said, fujur is meant by it. An yakhruj an al haqqi amdan. That the person will go out of the haq deliberately. Hatta yasir al haqqu batilat wal batilu haqqa. Until the haq becomes batil to him and the batil becomes haq. Wa adha mimma yad'u ilayhi al kadib. And that is what lying calls to. Wallahi, we see that in front of our faces. And we see that from our brother Muhammad Yasir Hadaullah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Man qala fi mu'minin ma laysa fihi askanahu Allahu radghat al khabal. Man qala fi mu'minin ma laysa fihi askanahu Allahu radghat al khabal. Wa laysa bi kharijim. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, that anyone who says about a believer that which he is free from, that which the believer hasn't said, anyone who says about a mu'min, ma laysa fihi, that which is not in him, that which he doesn't have in him, anyone who lies about him, askanahu Allahu radghat al khabal. Allah will let that person live who lied about the believer, Allah will take you to what? The hellfire and you will live in the waste of the hellfire. The place where the waste and the filth that comes out of the people of the hellfire, usara to ahli nar, their filth and their waste is what the person is going to live in. أَسْكَرَهُ اللَّهُ رَدْغَةَ الْخَبَالِ وَلَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم told us يا محمد ياسر May Allah guide you أخي فير الله تبارك وتعالى Don't say about the ulama which they haven't said لحوم العلماء مسمومة The flesh of the scholars are poisonous وعادة الله في هتك أستار منتقصه معلومة فمن أطلق لسانه بالعلماء بالثلب أبلاه الله قبل موت بموت القلب the flesh of the scholars is poisonous. Anyone who says about the scholars that which they are free from, Allah wa Taala will kill your heart before the real death comes to you. Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi rahimahullah. He told us three people' knowledge is not taken from them. Those who are arguing from Muhammad Yasir and his corruption and his misguidance take this message on board. Wallahi ni lakum nasihunamin. Wallahi I'm sincerely advising you. Thalathatun three people. لا يؤخذ عنهم knowledge is not taken from them المتهم المتهم بالكذب the person who is suspected of lying suspected he doesn't lie but he's suspected how about the person lies the second one is وصاحب بدعة a person of innovation يدعو إلى بدعته who calls the people to his innovation number two والرجل أنا person الغالي عليه الوهم والغلط who is excessively heedless who is excessively doing mistakes Imagine if all three and worse is present in you. You lie. You're a person of innovation and you call to innovation. You're a person who has so much wahm. I met, I proved it before. You couldn't even know the difference between who Abis Haqa Shatri is and Abul Qasim Shatri. You're trying to quote what's inside the book. You have no knowledge, Akhi. Billahi alayk. Don't deceive the Ummah. Wallahi, educate yourself. Learn. And Wallahi, the Haq will become clear to you. Wallahi, the sh'en mateen and the hate that you've shown Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah reminds me of a statement that uh, Abu al-Baqa al-Subhi rahimahullah said Abu al-Baqa, he said, Wallahi ya fulan Abu al-Baqa al-Subhi rahimahullah, he said, Wallahi ya fulan Ma yubghid Ibn Taymiyyah Wallahi, nobody hates Ibn Taymiyyah Illa jahilun, except an ignorant person Or sahibu hawa, or a person of designs Fal jahilu la yadri Ma yaqulu, the ignorant one doesn't know what he's saying وصاحب الهوى and the person of desires هاه يصد هواه عن الحق بعد معرفته به as for the person of desires he his desires his whims and his desires it stops him from following the حق after he came to know it شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية people who are great in status and rank have affirmed his status and his position and والله العظيم ابن تيمية will live Inshallah Ta'ala his name the way he lived when he was alive and he became his Shaykh Islam will ever be will, have, will forever stand Inshallah Ta'ala um, Ibn Daqiq al eid said a statement that shows you the status of this individual Ibn Daqiq said after he had to hear what Ibn Taymiyyah said he listened to the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah Ibn Daqiq al eid replied by saying ma kuntu adunnu I never ever assumed anna Allah Ta'ala baqiya yakhluqu mithlak I didn't assume that there was to remain 
for Allah to create somebody like you. I never thought. And in another place he said, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Daqiq al said, When I met Ibn Taymiyyah, I saw a man, I saw that all knowledge was put in front of him. He takes whatever he wants. And he leaves off that which he wants. A man who knowledge is presented in front of him. He takes whatever he wants and he leaves whatever he wants. Um, Ibn Zamlakani. Ibn Zamlakani. Rahimahullah said about Ibn Taymiyyah. Al Imam, Al Alim, Al Alam, Al Awhad, Al Hafid, Al Mujtahid, Al Zahid, Al Abid, Al Qudwa, Al Imam, Al Aimma, Qudwa, Al Umma, Al Lama, Al Ulama, Warith, Al Anbiya, Akhir, Al Mujtahidin, Awhad, Al Ulama, Al Deen, Barakat, Al Islam, Hujjat, Al A'lam. This is the statement. This is the title that I want you to hear. He called him Qami' Al Mubtadi'een, Muhyi Sunnah. He is the one who killed the innovation. Every innovator at the time of Ibn Taymiyyah who brought his head out. Ibn Taymiyyah chopped it off. He brought it out to the people for them to know. He brought life to the Sunnah. Rahimahullah. وَمَنْ عَظُمَتْ بِهِ لِلَّهِ عَلَيْنَا الْمِنَّةِ وَقَامَتْ بِهِ عَلَىٰ عَدَاءِ الْحُجَّةِ وَاسْتَبَانَتْ بِبَرَكَتِهِ وَهَدِيهِ He said he's a person who Allah Taala has made vast the, the rights that he has over us. And he said with him the proof and the evidences became clear. It became what? It became clear. And there are other scholars who praised him. And Imam al Dhahabi, what he said about him, Ibn Abdul Hadi, Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, Ibn Hajar, Nasruddin al Dimashqi. What they said about him, it would be long. And that isn't what I went from this. Our brother, um, Muhammad Yasir Hadahullah, the lie that he brought forward was that he said that Ibn Taymiyyah said, وَلَوْ قَدْ شَاءَ If Allah willed, لَاسْتَقَرَّ عَلَى ظَهْرِ بَعُوضَةِ If Allah willed, He would have sat on the back of a mosquito. Now, he ascribed that statement to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Awalan, um, our brother Muhammad Yasir, may Allah guide him. Wallahi, I don't know more that which I can say for him. May Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala guide him. He's a kadab. He's a liar. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah didn't say that statement. Ibn Taymiyyah transmitted the statement of Abu Uthman al-Darimi rahimahullah. So either you were ignorant or you deliberately made yourself ignorant. In kunta la tadri fa tilka musibah. Wa in kunta tadri fa musibah tu aabun. If you knew that is a musibah, it is a problem. And if you didn't know, then the musibah is even worse. The problem is even worse. If you didn't know, be quiet, learn. Educate yourself and learn, the, learn how to read. And if you didn't know and you deliberately did it, then it's worse. It just proves more that you're a liar. I went to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah didn't say that statement. And that statement was Abi Uthman al-Darimi, rahimahullah. Also, even that Abi Uthman al-Darimi, rahimahullah, rahmatan wa si'ah, who's an imam min a'immat al-sunnah. His statement was in what, uh, what context was it, was it in? Ibn Taymiyyah took it and he brought it in his book. What context was it in? It is fi baqam in naqdi wa rad. Ibn Imam al-Darimi, rahimahullah, when he was saying that, he was saying it from the angle of refutation, not from the angle of what? La maqam It wasn't an angle where he was affirming it and attributing these characteristics to Allah. Kalla. And he has, an, he has an example for this. Allah said in the Quran, Qul in kana lirrahman walad, fa'ana awwalu al-abideen. The messenger was refuting them. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, he told him to say this. If Allah had a child, Qul in kana lirrahman walad, fa'ana this is called what? Maqam al-Raddi wa naqb It's a refutation. Bringing the person's statement down and proving that he is wrong. Maqam al Not that Allah has a child. Subhanah. And it's like the statement of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he said, لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Muhammad, if you associate partners with Allah, your action will all nullify. And you will be from what? You're going to be from those who are lost. Will Nabi Allah Muhammad ever do shirk? Mustahil. Impossible for him to do it, alayhi salatu wasalam. He's infallible from that, alayhi salatu wasalam. Very good. So the Shaykh said, low. The second thing, inshallah ta'ala, 
is the Imam, Imam al-Darimi rahimahullah, he didn't say the statement that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala astaqarra ala dhahri al ba'udah He said, lo, if Allah willed. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like Allah said in the Quran, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدِ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ إِنْ كَانَ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدِ If Allah had a child. And no one can disagree Allah's ability, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you say Allah's ability is mahsur, is limited, kafart, you're a disbeliever. And the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, his statement has a context. Al-Imam al-Darimi, Abu Uthman al-Darimi's statement has a context. He was refuting Bishr al-Marisi al-Anid. On what issue? Uluwullah, Allah bin above his throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm going to come to this issue in a, in a bit. Which is, Allah doesn't need the throne. And this is what Abu Uthman al-Darimi, rahimahullah, is affirming. Read the context. Due to the short time, Allah, I can't read it. But go to the book, An-Naqdu ala Bishri al-Marisi by Abu Uthman al-Darimi. Read it. You'll see it. Last but not least. If all of those points that we mentioned, Uthman al-Darimi, rahimahullah, said it and he was wrong, that doesn't take his status away. He's an Imam Mubajjal. The Sunnah praised him. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Walayr. Other, they praised him of his status and his nobility. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm coming to him and his biography and about him in our, in our upcoming sins, sits inshallah ta'ala. But brothers, I want you to understand the point. The issue isn't, and I don't want you guys to be fooled, the issue isn't the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah here, which he's falsely accusing to him, which he didn't say. But the issue really is what? The issue is that these individuals believe affirming a characteristics for Allah automatically necessitates tajseem. Pay attention. If I say Allah has a hand from that statement, I am a mujassim. When Allah is saying in the Quran, خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْ I created it with my two hands. When Allah is saying, يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ When Allah is saying, الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ استوى. When Allah is saying, يَنْزِلُ رَبُّنَا ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْأَخِيرِ All of those, by just a mere affirming of it, I'm a mujassim. So Allah affirming it for himself in the Quran, me following Allah in this, and his messenger, I'm a mujassim. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajirun. I have two answers for that, inshallah ta'ala. Brothers and sisters who are listening, to call Ahlul Sunnah mujassima, or mushabbiha, it's not new. Wallahi, it's not new. It's not a new statement. Go to the book, Sharh al-Usul al-Tiqadi Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'ah by Abu Qasim, Hibatullahi la laka'i, rahimahullah. He brings the statement of who? Abi Ishaq ibn Ibrahim ibn Rahuya. Shaykh al-Bukhari, Imam al-Bukhari's teacher. He said, Alamatu Jahmin wa ashabi. Jahm ibn Safwan and his followers, his group. This is their ideology. Now compare that to what our brother Muhammad Yasir is saying. Tashabahat qulubuh. Wallahi, they're the same. Nothing different. Jahm ibn Safwan and his ashab. The sign, the alama for them is Ishaq ibn Rahuya is telling you. Da'wahum, they're claiming. Ala ahli al-jama'ati, they're claiming on ahli sunnati wal jama'a. Wa ma uli'u bihi min al-kadib. And they're false lying that they put forward. Innahum mushabbiha. They say that they're mushabbiha ahli sunnah. Kadib. Ishaq ibn Rahuya is saying to you. Bal humu al-mu'attila. Rada yujahmiya. يوم متعطلة ولو جاز أن يقال لهم هم المشبهة لاحتمل ذلك rather if it was said that you guys are the مشبهة you claim then he said that it's correct it could be said pay attention our brother محمد والله محمد ياسر is a مشبهة لمعطل pay attention to this why is he refusing to affirm Allah a hand why 
He says, if I affirm it for Allah a hand, automatically I will fall into tashbih. I will. That's what he's saying. So the reason why I can't do it is because laser communication. So what are you going to do? I have to say I don't know what hand is meant by here. So what did he just do? He did tashbih number one. Because there's the, the tashbih came to his brain and he got rid of it. And the second one was what? He done ta'atil. So the two characteristics which Ahlul Bida have is combined in him. As for me, when I say had, la yushabbihu, it doesn't resemble Allah's characteristics to me. Is that clear? clear, clear? Also, is, is Haq ibn Rahuya the only person who said that? La. Um, Abu Hatim al-Razi. He said, alamatul jahmiyyah, the sign of the jahmiyyah is, tasmiyatuhum, they're calling Ahlul Sunnah mushabbiha. They call Ahl Sunnah Mushabbiha. Ahl Sunnah are what? Mushabbiha. You're a Mushabbiha because you affirm for Allah a characteristics he affirmed for himself. <laughs> what else do you want me to do? Allah gave himself these characteristics. And the same was said by Ibn Khuzayma rahimahullah and other than them. My conclusion to you brothers is these arguments that the brother Muhammad Yasir keeps bringing forward is nothing new. All of them have answers. I ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala anything which I have said that is incorrect that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala forgives me for it. And I ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala to guide our brother Muhammad Yasir to bring him back to the haqq. And the people who are misguided in this matter. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Shadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiru wa tuhu. All heard the point brother Muhammad Yasir Hadahullah has put forward. He has Quoted from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's Majmu' al-Fatawa.